Well, all the results are out now, level 1, 2, and 3. This video is uh, for those who are going to be registering for either the May or the August level 3. So these are level 2 candidates who did uh, pass and are ready to move on to level 3. You're most likely selecting August. Uh, and uh, for level 3 candidates who did not pass, uh, you have a choice between May and August. And I think your choice should depend on how well you did relative to the minimum passing score. So let's draw a line for the minimum passing score. And let's say that you were down here just below and uh, your confidence intervals tend to overlap with the minimum passing score. Well, that's not a do-over. Uh, you're, you're very close. That's layering on a few extra things and, uh, and you can make a run for May. There's plenty of time. Uh, when you're already at this point. But let's back that uh, out of our minimum passing score there and let's draw another one. The further you are away from it, uh, you know, I've seen some that are uh, down here and even once you include the 95% confidence bands, uh, you're still quite a distance from the MPS. Well, there is something flawed in the process uh, here. So I would seem to think you'd want longer time because it almost seems like that's, uh, that's a do-over. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's hard to make broad statements like that without talking with each individual and seeing what went wrong. Uh, there are times where it's this low because, well, I did really great on the PM. I even had time, went back, checked my answers. But on the AM, I left four answers blank. Well, that'll do it, right? Uh, you didn't have the, the proper strategy I call it the AM. I got to stop calling it the AM. It used to be the AM uh, when it was paper based because you wrote it in the morning. Um, we'll just call it the SR, the structured response session, which I do down here. I've dropped the AM and I think it's time we all drop the AM because for um, candidates who've never seen the paper based exam in, in a year or two, there'll be candidates who at level three who've never seen it will be saying, what, what's, what's AM? It's so boomer. Uh, so we'll just call it the SR. Uh, uh, if you if you approach that session uh, with the wrong strategy, um, yeah, you could you could end up with what looks like a terrible score. Meanwhile, you could say, "But I knew it." And let's say that there were ten questions uh, on the uh, first session, and you answered five perfectly, but left five blank because uh, you answered five perfectly. You you kept writing and writing till you were certain that the grader knew that you knew it, you left five blank. You could produce something that looks like this and be bewildered. Or maybe you expected, you probably said, well, look, I left five blank. I mean, how well can I do, right? Uh, so uh, oftentimes uh, a, uh, a non-passing score can be attributed to the AM portion. I have a hard time attributing it to uh, the individual uh, uh, or, or, and lack of preparation. This is something you see at level one. You underestimate the content at level one. That's quite common. Um, but at level three, no, you've made it through level one. You've made it through level two. Level three, it's, it's not your cognitive ability. It's, it's not your planning ability, hopefully. It's not that you underestimated uh, something. Something else in the, uh, in the process went wrong. So we'll see if we can uncover some of these things. Uh, and again, oftentimes, it is that structured response. Um, so we got May and we got August. Uh, May is uh, 109 days away. If, uh, if you're doing this again and you were close, uh, you just need a better uh, structured response strategy. May sounds good brand new to this, don't, don't, don't take May. 109 days is, is simply not enough. Uh, you're going to be um, the August 30th exam, 207 days, there you go. Uh, and there is lots of academic research in learning theory to support uh, that, um, that learning over time is more effective than cramming it all in in a one or two month period. Uh, so that you end up retaining more of the information longer past the exam and a better understanding for the exam if you uh, space out your study uh, your study sessions as opposed to doing these eight hour sessions for three weeks straight to get something done uh, so if you're uh, new to level three august 
if you are uh, um, you know uh, down here and it uh, and you feel that well no I, I answered all the questions in in the a.m. Uh, that that's not a reason then uh, I would say you're August as well you got 35 readings here 2022 35 there's now three case studies so there's 32 readings three case studies um, 35 days for review um, if you have the 109 or the 207 you can do your own math to figure out how much learning days you have if we're looking at uh, August here which uh, uh, this is what this is for that's five days per reading uh, that's a good pace uh, th there you won't feel overwhelmed by looking at the calendar saying I still got you know 27 readings to get through I have no time to slow down you cannot learn in a hurry uh, all brains have a speed limit uh, and the uh, more cognitively detailed the writing, the, the more you have to slow down. You can think of uh, some learning as either, you know, highway speed or city speed. You know, and when, especially when you get to uh, quantitative-based uh, uh, readings, derivatives, economics, some of the fixed income, uh, you can't read it like you read a novel. you got to slow down. Your brain has a speed limit. Exceed that speed limit and you're going to learn nothing which means you're simply just wasting your time. Give yourself, give yourself time. Um, keep your eye on the early registration deadline. It's February 9th, uh, February 9th for the August exam. It's a difference of $700 versus $1,000 if you wait 24 hours past that point. So if you're going to do the August exam, um, save yourself 300 bucks. It's $700. Uh, and it's uh, I'm doing this now. It's the fourth, so you got you got less than a week, so don't hesitate. Uh, February, if you think, well, I'm not going to write this year. I'm going to write in 2023, February 2023. Um, that content is not even available at this point in time, and it cannot be released. I think uh, until June. I think June is when registration opens for February 2023, and no one can release anything before registration opens, so uh, that's that. Uh, for um, on our side, just so that you are aware, um, we have held our prices constant um, for 2022 over 2020 and 2021. Oh, sorry, 2021. Um, but uh, I don't think it's any secret that inflation is everywhere, and we're seeing it everywhere as well, especially wage inflation. You want to keep your employees. Uh, you either reprice them yourself or they'll walk across the street and reprice themselves, right? So you have to uh, you have to do that. And I think almost every single supplier we have from Amazon all the way through to, to, to Bell Canada, which provides internet, has already signaled that, hey, listen, uh, your prices are going up. Uh, so we are going to be looking at a price increase for 2023. However, in uh, any price increase, I always say, well, what extra value can we add on? I, I, I don't just like increasing the price just because our costs are going up. What more can we do uh, to put value in there? And we've, we've done a lot to reduce the amount of the price increase uh, that we needed. One of the things we've done was move the archives into the app only. You can view your archives in the app. Um, that saves a ton of cash in streaming off of our site because you're downloading the archive into the app it doesn't cost us anything at that point so uh, we can avoid a huge a huge price increase but we still have some residual price increase coming what we're going to do for 2023 is uh, all our subscriptions are one fee to pass uh, starting with the the uh, February 2023 or anything for 2023 the one fee to pass will now extend to uh, those who were registered for an exam but did not sit our one fee to pass has only uh, you know, one criteria is you had to have failed the exam. And if you did, we'll carry you to the next exam you register for. Uh, and, well, what if you're a candidate who knew they weren't going to make it, life happened, and you had good plans, but life happens, and, and you just, it had, it had to go on the back burner. Why show up for something you know that, that, that you didn't prepare for? Um, currently we don't have that covered because uh, it just seems kind of like a loophole uh, so uh, we will we will extend the one fee to pass for that because while we have a price increase 
If you're going to increase your price, you have to increase your value. That's a rule. That should be a law, not just a rule, but uh, uh, there it is. Okay, let's, uh, let's talk about uh, the structured response. We'll talk about this first before we go on to um, uh, 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 the, uh, the next point, which is more uh, um, individual uh, related as opposed to uh, exam related here. Session one is the structured response. Uh, and um, when, when I do talk to candidates who did not pass, quite often they, do, they, they, they admit to not finishing the AM, sorry, the structured response session of the exam. Uh, and there are uh, common culprits, uh, writing too much. Uh, these are structured response, not open response. An open response is, yeah, let, demonstrate to me that you really know this. Structured response is, give me the answer. I don't need you to demonstrate that you know the answer is the answer. It is just, give me the answer. One to two bullet points maximum. Uh, but this is not how we uh, um, faced exams in university. In university, a professor asked you a question and you wrote as much as you knew to demonstrate that you actually knew all of that stuff. You were, you were showing the professor that you could also teach the professor the answer. Here, no. Uh, if you're writing too much, you know, if your answers are 50 words, 100 words, 150 words, you are not going to finish and you're missing the point. You're answering that question wrong. Uh, trying to get the perfect answer each time, you know, teaching the grader what the answer is to demonstrate that you know it. That's not the point of these, of what a structured response would be. Uh, many times the, the answer is one bullet point, maybe six, seven words, that's it. Um, and if you do follow the strategy of really demonstrating that you know it so there's no doubt that you've earned all the marks for that question, you're not going to answer all the questions. You're going to run out of time. And again, you know, if you answered five of the ten, the first five you may have got 100% on. But you got 0% on the other five, which means you got 50% on half the exam. You would have to really uh, uh, do well on the... Um, on the vignette style multiple choice questions uh, to still pass that exam. Uh, so that usually is a, a, uh, a, big, a big issue. Another problem with the AM is spending too much time on one question out of pride. Is you're reading it and uh, you know, you're know you thinking it through and no, that's not it. I can get this, I can get this, I know, I know I know this. And you keep at it and you keep at it because you're gonna get it. Uh, and you spend half an hour on the first question you're not going to finish. Every minute is worth one mark. Uh, every minute. The next minute is worth a mark. So spend that next minute on something that, that isn't causing you grief. Uh, so, uh, you know, and then you can come back to these other questions later on. All, all of this kind of strategy um, is, is laid out uh, for you. Uh, we do that. Um, this is the support that we have for the structured response session. Um, we have uh, two structured response exam seminars which go through what I just went through. You know, the proper way to answer a question, strategies, uh, and, and things like that. Uh, and as far as exams that we, we do offer, we have two past CFAI Level 3 exams from 2018 and 2017. They're updated to 2022 content. And by the way, this is the last year that we can have these. Once we get to 2023, these disappear. They disappear. Uh, so this is it. Um, I've also written four structured response exams at 135 points each and three structured response exams at 180 points each. Uh, so uh, four times 135 is equal to three times 180. So we basically have eight 135-point uh, um, AM sorry, structured response uh, exams. Not only that, every question, uh, when you uh, answer it uh, and you're grading yourself, uh, every question has an enhanced grading key plus a video walkthrough of the answer. Uh, uh, also describing how to answer it, what the answer is, and why that is the answer. Not only that, we also have live uh, streaming. Uh, eight hours of live streaming uh, for each exam. 
So that's 32 hours of live sessions that you can attend where you can ask your questions. And I go through each question. Question number one, let's look at the keywords. I show you how to read the question. We go to the question first. We look at the keywords. Once we see what the keyword is, we know what our answer should look like. We know how long our answer should be. If we see keyword identify, we know, ah, repeat a case fact and it's one bullet point. That's it. That's what identify is. Uh, so it's uh, um, 32 hours of that. Eight hours for each of these uh, exams. And they're in two-hour sessions. So there's four times uh, two-hour sessions, all at different times because we're global. Uh, so you want to appeal to as many time zones as you possibly can. Uh, and week one, we do exam one. Week two, we do exam two, all the way to week four, so that uh, you can do them in order. And then on the weekends, we do uh, these, uh, these sessions, and these are broken down. Uh, uh, these are 12 hours, but they're broken down into two parts. Part one is questions one through five. Part two is questions six through 10, because these are much more detailed. These are harder questions. They're longer questions uh, and have a lot more detail in them. Uh, typically, they take about six hours to do a good long walkthrough uh, of these. So I break them down into two three-hour uh, three hour segments. So there's uh, 12 hours, three exams. There's another 36 hours uh, of structured response training. So in total, there's 68 hours. 68 hours altogether, you have eight uh, structured response exams. And I don't write them easy. They are on the harder side. Uh, we have a couple of seminars that you go through. There is no lack of support uh, for the structured response session. So that if you are using this, this is part of the subscription. If you have a subscription, all of this, all of this is included. All of that is, you know, all of the hours that you attend, these are all free. You don't have to pay for those uh, if you have the subscription. You're already, you're already in there. Um, when I did them in November, they were well attended. Um, being that we have uh, a huge population of level three candidates, when I say they were well attended, not based on the number of candidates we had. Uh, they were poorly attended, if you look at it that way, but overall they were well attended. I would like them to be much uh, uh, more attended than what they are. And even though they're two hour sessions, uh, I did go over uh, uh, and those two hours uh, quite a bit. Uh, there's the website if you're interested in uh, looking at that. Let's move on to um, let's move on to the individual now. That you may say, well, this is this is not my problem. Uh, you know, I felt uh, that I did well on all of this. Uh, so uh, when I'm asked to suggest a strategy. You know, I've got to take the exam again. Can you suggest a, a strategy? I find that to be a kind of a rather difficult question to answer because I don't have a unique answer. That if I ask you that same question, um, the usual suspects would show up. Well, I, you know, you got to read uh, uh, each of the readings. You have to do questions. You have to review what you've done. Uh, take some notes. Uh, do some mock exams. Uh, you know, all getting down to the same uh, to the same message in the end. You got to put in the time, and I did put in the time. I put in 450 hours. Uh, so I'm not sure what went wrong. What would I do differently? And I don't know that the what you would do is the problem. Uh, so I went, uh, you know, to try to answer this, I, I went back to the academic literature on, on learning theory and I tried to see, is, you know, is there anything interesting or anything new that I could add on other than the typical, you know, thing that you'd expect a professor to say, well, you just got to put your nose to the grindstone, you got to work hard, you got to focus, uh, you know, all that. Well, maybe you are doing all of that, right? Is there something missing? And I think I... You know, I found something that I think might be interesting um, that, you know, I've said before in previous videos is, is you have to want to do this. Now, you're at level three, so I think you've demonstrated that you want to do this. But I think it's worth uh, looking at again. Um, you need a why. You know, why is what drives you. That gives you that internal motivation. If you find this stuff uninteresting, yeah, it's going to be hard to do any kind of a deep dive. 
Uh, so it is your it is the why you do this or the lack of why uh, that in large part determines um, how you do what you do. So it's easy to come up with a list of what. You know, read, videos, questions, all of that. Uh, and then there's a how. Well, how do you do that? And then there's the why. So let's, uh, let's look at the next screen. Okay, exam score. This is what we're trying to maximize. And if you go to Google Scholar and type in predictors of exam score, predictors of exam success, uh, anything along those lines, you'll get a bunch of uh, um, links to um, academic papers. And as you go through them, you will find that there are a number of independent variables that keep um, reappearing. The big one is time spent studying. That's the big one. Well, that's not shocking, is it? The more time you put in, the uh, probabilistically speaking, not deterministically, uh, the higher the exam score you should have, or the better you should do, the better your performance should be on the exam. And they're self-testing, uh, especially for quant-based topics, that unless you go to the end of the uh, chapter and you do those problems at the end of the chapter, uh, and that you can do them without referring back to the to the content that you get to the point where where you don't need to refer back to the notes to say okay well what do I do next what's my next step that you just get through it uh, when I, when you get to quant based topics that really is the only way to internalize it is to actually jump in there and 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 get your hands uh, get your hands dirty but self testing these are your end of chapter questions question banks mock exams. So these are the two big ones. And this is what uh, candidates report. Well, I spent this many hours and I did all the questions. I did these two things. Where is my exam score? Uh, shouldn't, shouldn't there be a relationship there? Uh, well, there is one more variable, motivation. And motivation determines the how you approach self-studying and how you approach your time spent or how you spend that time. And your motivation comes from a why. Why are you doing this in the first place? In previous videos and past videos, uh, I've talked about this, that if you don't enjoy this, you would have learned at level one that you didn't enjoy this, by the way, but if you don't enjoy this, if you're looking at the top, it's going, oh, this is so boring, that you, you, know, you don't really care about the material, you don't really care about the content, you're credentialing because you think you have to, then, then, then yeah, it's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. Uh, because you're probably going to be doing these two things uh, in a very superficial way. And this is what motivation uh, uh, determines is how you do this. And the how you do this leads also leads to exam success. It has a strong relationship with performance. So you can take somebody who is low uh, on motivation and does the same thing spends the same amount of time studying, goes through the end of chapter questions, does the mock exams, does all the same things, but scores significantly lower. Uh, because while they were doing uh, these two things, uh, they had low engagement, what is called uh, superficial, uh, uh, superficial engagement. So things like uh, reading or rereading, passively watching any kind of presentation that is happening or uh, passively watching any of the videos just sitting in front of the screen while the while the video is playing uh, and saying, well, you know, I watched all the videos. Sure, <clears throat> you can watch all the videos, um, but there are different, different levels of intensity at which you watch them. If you're not motivated by something, you, you don't really watch it that well. Ooh, you know, think about you know, sitting uh, in, in your living room with uh, whomever and, and they're watching a show they like and you're absolutely uninterested in the show that they like. Uh, um, you're at the end of the show, the other person really knows what happened, but you don't. Even though you sat there and watched it, you had no engagement with it. You couldn't, you, you, you didn't really care. Well, same thing, right? Your why you're doing it is not there. So the how you're doing it is different. It's superficial instead of effortful. So yeah, you can say, hey, I put in the time, I did the quizzes, I did all the readings, I did 10 mock exams, my spreadsheet says I put in 450 hours. What am I doing wrong? I don't know. You know, it's not the what you are doing wrong. 
Perhaps it's the how you're doing what you're doing that is wrong. So um, where are you going to get your motivation from? That, that all comes from you internally. You've got to figure out why it is that you're doing what you're doing. Uh, but if you do have that motivation, I can only assume at level three you have that, uh, uh, you have that uh, level of motivation. Let's not forget here, it has a strong relationship with performance, but it's not a direct relationship. Hey, I'm very, very motivated. I love this topic. I'll probably do well on every exam. Uh, it works through self-testing and it works through time spent studying that, hey, I'm really uh, motivated uh, to learn this stuff. Uh, it will affect how you approach these two topics in a more effortful way. Uh, and just I've just listed some of the things that are considered effortful. Self-explanation, summarization, and the spacing effect. Self-explanation is uh, rather than passively watch a video, you're watching... Uh, 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 let's just take one of mine for example I break them down by LOS so you get past LOSA and we're about to start LOSB you hit pause and you say okay here's what LOSA is about and then you, you summarize what it was and if you can't you know you have to go back and watch it again when you know you're watching something and after 10 or 15 minutes somebody's going to stop the video and say okay in your own words what did that guy just say you watch it with a little bit more intensity uh, it becomes more effortful as opposed to superficial. Self-explanation, uh, even reading, read a paragraph, stop, look up and say, what did that paragraph just say? Let me repeat it in my own words. If you can't, you didn't understand it, you got to go back until you, can until you can look up and say, this is what this, this, this uh, uh, paragraph said. Now, you know you're going to be doing that at the end of each paragraph, so you're going to be reading it a little bit more intensely. Uh, that's the same thing with summarization, self-explanation, summarization. The spacing effect uh, means that you're not going to start at 8 a.m. and uh, pull eight hours. Uh, that you're going to have, you know, 45 minutes here and then maybe at the end of the day you're going to have another 45 minutes and you're going to do that over a period of time. This part in the middle where you're not doing anything, uh, you'd be amazed at what your brain is doing. Uh, behind the scenes. You don't actually have to have all the words in front of you and all the ideas and thoughts in front of you to be learning. Uh, when you leave a problem and you walk away, you're still learning. Your brain is still working on it. You're still thinking about it and you're reflecting on it. You know, how many times have you been in a debate with someone about a topic that happens just, you know, just in the course of conversation this topic comes up and you have one belief and the other person has another belief and you make your points and then you go away and, you know, a few hours later you're saying, oh, I should have said this and I should have said that. Here's another good point as well, right? You don't let it go. Your, your brain still works on it. Well, when you're doing these big eight-hour marathons, you're not giving your brain this time in the middle to say, let me reflect on what I just did in the spacing effect. So, uh, you know, it, uh, it could be that you are doing the what's, except you're not doing it in the right way. It's the how. You have to, you know, come in there with motivation. If you're uh, at level three, like I say, I assume that you, you are self-motivated. Otherwise, you wouldn't have gotten to level three, that you are interested in the topic. And most candidates at level three are well placed by well placed i mean i i look at their job titles i, I look at the email addresses they have and and they're all represented all the banks are represented all the investment companies are represented on our site uh so they 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 are actually working uh in 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 their chosen field now, some aren't you know you can get to level three without ever having a job you just can't get the three letters until you have a job um so to help with motivation I mean, this really, it really is more of an internal thing, is why you're doing what you're doing. Where is that why coming from? Um, I can't do much for that. Um, but what I can do is I can make it uh, somewhat more relevant, more real world, and make it slightly more addicting. Uh, so um, I used to do um, applied series videos where I would take content from level one, two, or three and apply it. Uh, it, to something in the real world and I do those uh, I don't know every three four weeks or once a month or once every two months 
Um, so what I'm doing now uh, for the rest for the balance of this year is I'm going to do a weekly every Sunday I'm going to do a weekly market update and we're going to apply as many of the concepts as we can from level one two three to the weekly update to see where we are in the markets and you know make our best educated guess as to what we think is going on and where we think we're going and what are interesting sectors to be in what are interesting places to be in what's going on with the yield curve how's that going to affect valuations what's going on in uh, different uh, sectors of uh, the economy how's that going to affect prices in the market um, these are about hour and a half videos every Sunday to start the week uh, and I'm I'm gonna do one a week and they'll just be included in with a subscription that when you see this being applied uh, and you see how it actually works in the real world how it actually applies sometimes it takes the abstract things that are abstract and hard to get your head around of you know how does this fit in and how does that fit in when you see it applied it makes it all very real and sometimes you can get your motivation from saying oh you mean when I'm when I know this stuff I can do that yes so hopefully that's that's about the best I can do for motivation because motivation really has to come internally uh, I know that uh, throughout all of my education uh, uh, there have been some topics that it wouldn't matter what you did I wasn't going to be motivated uh, in every business undergrad everyone has to take one HR course there is nothing you can do to motivate me for that I have no internal motivation at all I, I don't care how it's applied you know uh, you're at level three so I don't think you're there but uh, that is just a you know a, a good example of where you know it just wouldn't matter this is just something I had to just get through uh, but for for this kind of stuff the market by the way is in my opinion uh, one of the most perfect games in the world to play uh, and the more you uh, engage with it the more you see its perfection we think that oh, it's just this big messy random walk but it's not it's it's got perfection to it in its in its randomness you find that perfection it's a big chess game uh, you know it's a, a cognitive puzzle every week to look at what's going on what are other people doing what do other people think is going on because that's going to affect things and to solve that puzzle every Sunday um, there's there's my why there's my motivation and it makes it makes all the difference in how you do this and how you do that that is my best uh, 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 you know my best ideas in, in terms of how you would um, reapproach level three if you didn't if you didn't pass the first time is let's make sure you're not going wrong in the structured response and let's make sure that you have a very good why and that why is determining the how you do what you do